The ship is on its way, right on schedule. Of course it is. They don't have the Reaper on board. One more thing. Apparently, Shigure is Artorius' bodyguard. So we'll have to face him down sometime, no matter what. It's in our best interest to get rid of him while he's working alone. The problem is, Rokuro can't beat him by himself. Agreed. Shigure is not to be trifled with. Certainly. That's why, when Rokuro creates an opening, we're going to take Shigure out. You want us to meddle in somebody else's private quarrel? If it affects my own quarrel, yes. I suppose I'm in the same position. Besides, I can still use him. There's no sense in throwing his life away. Rokuro's not really a guy to care about the big picture. He might try to hack your limbs off a bit, but he'll get over it. I made the Enfu rush out to the docks to scout the place out. Pretty smart, am I right? I pity that creature sometimes. That Kurogane, though, what a character! Giving his own body to forge a sword, like some kind of ritual sacrifice. Ritual sacrifice? It's certainly something only a demon would do. It was a necessary sacrifice in order to gain power. A necessary sacrifice. What a vicious turn of phrase. Indeed. Still, I can't say I'm not thrilled to see how it all turns out. If what you give is mere meat for a god's morbid lunch, could there be a more trivial sacrifice? But if the offering is one's own body and soul, even a single hair can be portentous. I wonder what she will have been, in the end. Rokuro wants to slay his brother, even if it kills him. And Kurogane had his own head lopped off just to forge powerful swords. How do those two find it in themselves to go so far? It's just how they are. They're demons. Not exactly normal. Yeah, it's scary. But I also kinda admire it. But me, I don't have anything I'm that desperate to accomplish. Not yet, you mean. In time, you'll find something. You really think so? Almost certainly. But don't feel you have to go and risk your life over it. You're not a demon. And you should stay that way. You deserve a normal life. Okay. But never mind. Just the foolish ramblings of a demon girl. Rokuro, Kurogane, I just do not understand them. You saw them. Demons. We're crazy. Sure, but they go through life with such crystal clear sense of purpose. Even demons have things they're not willing to let go. Or do you think us mere animals, running around killing people left and right? I know, I know. I understand demons still have a certain consciousness, but I look at those two and they seem passionate, like normal people. Well, I've yet to meet a human so passionate he'd chop his own head off. Do you have a purpose like they do? I do, in fact. Ever since Artorius used my brother as a sacrifice. Typical demon nonsense. The Abbey exists to protect the people. Yes, sometimes cold, painful decisions need to be made to protect the many. But they never stoop to human sacrifice. Besides, as Shepherd, Artorius will cleanse the world of... If that's what you think, ask the precious Shepherd yourself. Ask him just what he did three years ago. He wouldn't. He'd never... Bad, bad news! A group of Praetors have left the docks and are headed this way! Uh -oh. They said they were coming to purge Eleanor the traitor! Purge? Velvet, what do we do? We take them head on. And you're fighting with us, Eleanor. An order, I presume. It is. Protect Lafayette and defeat the exorcists. All right. I understand. Just remember, if we lose Eleanor, Lafayette will turn into a demon. I haven't forgotten. But we need to pool all the resources we have. She needs us for her own ends. And we'll use that to our advantage in this fight. Just don't push your luck too far, Velvet. And so recently was she a noble, upstanding young exorcist. How quickly one falls when entering Velvet's dark orbit. Ask me if I care.
Your collusion could spell disaster to the Abbey if left unchecked. The only possible atonement is your death. <laughs> You've betrayed the people and sullied Artorius' ideals. No, that's not... <laughs> Velvet, she's testing me. I know I have to fight. My mission calls for it. But any more of this will kill them. Time for you to die and be purged! Eleanor! <laughs> I can't do it. I can't kill them. I'm not done yet. There. Now we're even, Eleanor. You've got new swords. Sinister. I like it. I take it you're ready. Yeah. All that's left is to kill Sigure. With me as a witness. <sighs> I... I... Keep on fighting like that, and you'll be killed. And if you get killed, Luffy said will lose his vessel. I know that. Velvet, wait. You're... you're not going to kill them? I'm just not that hungry right now. I've got new orders for you. Fight the exorcists, but make sure they don't die. Understood. I guess that was as far as Eleanor could go. I think so. Push her any further and she's bound to break. <laughs> Ever the virtuous exorcist. That very virtue is what lets her be Lafayette's vessel. Besides, I can't help but admire her commitment. She's enduring total disgrace to accomplish her mission. How uncommonly pleasant of you. Pleasant folks don't use people the way we do. Yeah, you've got that right. Yep, we are the bad guys. Well! Time to dish out spanking! <laughs> talk to you about something that's on my mind. I figured it was just about the time that you and I had the talk, actually. I've seen it all, heard it all, and even tasted it all in my time as a Moloch. Ask me anything you want. Thanks. I was hoping you could let me borrow those books you were reading earlier. If that's okay. 
You mean how to talk a human female into becoming your vessel and how to get the cuties? Hey, keep it down, keep it down. But you and Madame Eleanor have already formed a pact. Why do you still need either of those books? Well, it's like when we're alone together, things get so awkward. It's hard to talk with her, you know? <laughs> that happens a lot with Malakim and Vessels who are still new to the whole thing. I've been there. In that case, I've got an even better book for you. Whoa, you read a lot of books. I'm just an avid learner is all. Now let's see. Oh, here we go. Hot Spring Topics, Bearing Your Body and Your Soul. Being upfront and honest is always the best policy. I... I don't think we'll be bathing in any hot springs together. Do you have anything else? All right, then how about... After bath party games, dropping your defenses and your towels. Why do you keep trying to get us naked? I think that would just make things even more awkward. Picky, picky. Tell you what, you can just look at my collection and pick whatever sounds good. Love hacking. Living long and loving hard. Diary of a diary thief. Hands speak louder than words. All classics. I remember reading them when Miss Mogilu and I were struggling to get along. Oh, to be young again. You ever think maybe things would have been easier if you never read these books? Reading the mood. Knowing what to say and how to say it. That one's a winner. A must read for sure. Are you two reading something together? We uh -oh. are. We are. Loppy Set's been worried about that awkward distance between you two, and he came to me for some advice. I've heard his side of the story, so let's you and I grab some tea and talk about what to do about it. Come on! Let's go, let's go! Oh, okay. Knowing what to say and how to say it. I don't think this will help either. Hey, Rokoro. Why did he call your storm howl a reject? Well, you see... When blacksmiths make swords, they don't just make one at a time. They make a whole bunch. The best one of them all is the one that gets presented to the swords commissioner, while the rest are tossed aside. Huh. I didn't realize the standards were so high. The head of my clan gets the real Storm Howl, and his siblings get the remainders. So one is real, and the others are imitations? I guess so. Shigure has the real one, and... Yeah... Guess that makes mine an imitation. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to imply... Don't apologize. You got me to finally realize something. It might just be why I'm so hung up on beating him. Oh. And to Velvet? Which Luffy said is real? And which is the imitation? Oh. What are you saying? She means my name. It's the same as Velvet's brothers. Huh? The one who went and got sacrificed by Artorius. Surely you are mistaken. Our shepherd would never do such a thing. But what else could make Velvet hate Artorius so much? I... I don't... So you have a truth, and Velvet has a truth. Now which is the real one, and which is the imitation? Uh, uh... No, my dear. You have to make... You have to speak of your mouth. You and Shigure both use the Rangetsu style. But to me, it looked like you both fight completely differently. Why is that? Our school encompasses two distinct forms. To the outside world, we're known for fighting with a single great sword. But we also study dual short swords should need arise. So, Shigure uses the great sword, and you use the short. In most schools, wouldn't the secondary technique be used primarily in support of the first? That's true for us as well. We learned the dual short swords to provide sparring partners for those studying the great sword. Then why would you handicap yourself against Lord Shigure? He's no mere swordsman. As I'm painfully aware, Shigure is a true master. We trained together since we were small children. I was his sparring partner for ten years. <sighs> his skill with the great sword is godlike. So, in order to beat him, I took up the short blades. 
To our school, it might be secondary, but it's what I know best. You're badly disadvantaged in reach. If I eliminate my fear, I have a chance. If I can control the terror of being split in half, and I can step inside his guard, he'll have two times the trouble. Eliminating fear, huh? A style for someone who's lost his humanity. Right? It's like you two brothers are the very swords you carry. Huh? Stormhowl, a godlike sword known to all as the strongest there ever was. Stormquell, burdened by the ceaseless struggle to best the other. One, an exorcist who walks in the light. One, a demon moving through the shadows. The only thing these two polar opposites want is to cut down the other. Precisely! Both are renowned blades. But I don't see what exorcists and demons have to do with it. Hi everyone and welcome to Bazaar. It's been a while since I caught some footage, but last time I tried to check, actually I think I actually is the recording of this part. So I guess we're gonna face Roko's brother. And yeah, it was kind of a little bit like grand a little just to get used to the comments. So yeah, I guess we're gonna continue with the story now. Finally after all, so much time. There they are. Which must mean they took out every one of the exorcists who went after them. Hey, I told them not to bother. Now, how did that sword of yours turn out? <laughs> Fine. I'll find out for myself. Rokuro, we can handle the exorcists. Go and find your victory. Thanks. All right, let's get down to business. Now that, you better not die too quickly on me. I want this to be fun. Come on, bro. Don't hold back. Shut up. Don't play games with me. Some fine looking swords you got there. Take a good look. Because they're going to cut you killing flash! But I'm getting close. I want it! Four zero Split! Another one? You put up a good fight. I'll give you that. But you're a frickin' demon. Shouldn't you bring more to the table than pretty damn good Rangetsu style? You don't have what it takes to win against the rightful heir. Don't so count me out. Just yet. I've got something to show you! 
Clever, giving up one of your own hands to go for my neck. If I was just a second slower, I'd be dead now. I like it. This is what I've been looking for. All right, let's call it good here. Oh, come on. Listen up. If you all want any hope of beating me, come find me once you're more skilled and better armed. How oh, about now? <sighs> okay, I'm gonna move oh, the head. God, you die. No matter how many times I lose, no matter how many years it takes. Wendy, do you saw? There we go. That's the face I'm looking for. So vicious. It's perfect. <laughs> what is wrong with him? Shouldn't you be worrying more about your own skin? The entire Abbey knows by now that you're a traitor. Uh, that guy, he was really strong. Yeah, he was. They all are. But we will beat him if we must. No matter what it takes. <sighs> How do you speak? Von Eltius here. Let's get going. Please, take me with you. I'll make a sword that surpasses Storm Hal yet. I know I will. But for another blade to beat Storm Hal, its wielder must be a swordsman of unmatched skill. Hey, Eisen. Got any room on this pile of wood scrap for a suit of armor? If not, Make someone wear it. <laughs> Works for me. You heard him, Kurogane. Many thanks. Okay, we're off to find Grimoire and decipher the book. You know where we're going, right, kiddo? Yeah. We're headed for the Isalt Archipelago in South Gand. Did I give you glasses? Maybe I changed them. Level up! Man, I don't know how to manage alt. Oh, I skip. Oh, hey, some. Oh, hello. Oh, no, stop. Oh, wait, this is. Oh, this is not, uh, not I got yet. Let's see what we have. Yeah, what's that icon? Oh, I guess I defeat some kind of extra. Okay, then it's no, not this. It's demon hand. It's such a mysterious weapon. I can only imagine how much of a threat it will become to the Abbey. This calls for a clear-headed breakdown of everything I know about it so far. It changes shape in a flash and could devour most anything. How must that feel to devour something with your hand like that? But it doesn't devour the bandages that cover it up. Maybe they're protected with some sort of special art? Likewise, the rest of her outfit can't be ignored. One would think she wouldn't want to wear such ragged clothing, yet she clearly has no inclination of buying something new. I suppose that could be taken to mean she has some sort of attachment to it. But that top is really big for her. Like it was made for a man! Maybe she wears that outfit in memory of someone important to her. I'd better not touch it then. I know I may not look it, but I really am good at sewing. What are you guys doing? Maybe I should suggest mending her clothes rather than outright replacing them. On the other hand, 
That fabric looks like it would be hard to push a needle through. I could be in over my head. But the tougher the fight, the more I get fired up! Of course, Lord Artorius would probably scold me if he heard me talking like that. Who'd scold you for what now? Oh, uh, well, I was thinking about sewing! I mean, your clothes, they're all beat up, and I thought that if I offered to mend them for you, you'd probably scold me, wouldn't you? You'd mend my clothes? Have they been worrying you that much? I mean, not like constantly or anything. It just crosses my mind from time to time. Are you good at it? Yes. I'm told I come across as awkward sometimes, but if nothing else, I'm good with my hands. I see. All right. If I ever need it done, I'll come to you. Good. Just leave it to me. Are you feeling all right? You're really sweating. The heat and the cold doesn't bother me at all. But you're a human, so you need to take care of yourself. Huh? And if you keep soaking in your own sweat, you'll catch a cold. Besides, I don't imagine it feels that great. You should keep washing and bathing on your own schedule, like however you did before falling in with us. Just let me know and I'll make it work. Because the guys aren't considerate enough to stop and ask you if you need to. Sure. All right. Thanks. That was a surprisingly normal thing for her to say. I probably shouldn't bother with her clothes for now. We girls have to be considerate of each other. Well, that was the thing. Okay, what do I trying to do before that? No, not this. Ah, oh, this. Uh, I, I don't know what to do with these guys. Oh yeah, I know him, but he put uh, these two together in the girls' thing to save for a time. Okay. 